All right, welcome back to the shop. Here we are. I have the follow-up video to the magnetic fence. Um, this is just a piece of angle iron that I had kind of modified to give myself a temporary fence on the bandsaw because sometimes I found myself wanting to rip something. Uh, I don't have a fence. I didn't want to buy something just to give myself a little bit of a guide to the left or right of the blade as I'm cutting. So this was kind of my solution. Now it works fantastic and I think that it could do with actually two more magnets which I have just found uh, this morning and I'm going to add these and since I didn't do a video for this in the first place uh, I'm going to add these today and go over how I kind of construct this and what I'm using on the bottom and how I attach these. Um, these are actually through holes into uh, the steel. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. You can see the magnets are drilled through the steel and set in there with um, super glue, cyanacrylate. Uh, and then this paper that I've put on the back is actually sandpaper, 30 micron polishing grit sandpaper upside down. So actually the rough side is facing the steel. And I just kind of spray glued that on there because when I found you turn this upside down on the bandsaw, it allows a little more friction so it doesn't slide around. It gives you a good positioning once it's there and there's a little bit of tack so it doesn't slide. So you attach this, boom, kind of inch it into place with your thumbs or you know however you want to get it and then check it with your ruler on the top of the fence and the bottom of the fence to make sure it's parallel with your blade. This is just something to get me through a couple basic cuts um, if I want to make a fairly straight cut on something and I don't want to have to sit there and focus on it. Uh, sometimes I cut a lot of thinner, small metal, uh, copper, stuff like that. So this works out great for that or small pieces of wood. Uh, and if you watch that last video, you can actually see I had a log up against it and it didn't really move. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and I'll show you how I did this. First thing I'm going to do is remove this base piece that's basically just for the friction. I'm going to mark off two more holes. Um, where I want these new magnets to go. I'm going to drill them out on the drill press, glue in the things, and then give it a test run on the bandsaw and kind of show you how I work this. Half inch drill bit chucked up in the drill press, and I've got my marks on the angle iron ready to go. So. got two new holes drilled in there you can see it's a pretty simple process to get those in and now hopefully those magnets are just about the right size and uh, we'll go ahead and glue them in now before I did anything to this I ended up sanding down the bottom of this a little bit just to make sure it was nice and flush and smooth so what I did to do that was took a piece of sandpaper um, I just hit it with a little bit of a super 77 spray adhesive and then slapped that down to the table and then I took the uh, angle iron and just ran it across it back and forth. I had already done this once, so I'm not going to go ahead and go crazy again, but this is all very smooth now. I've got my magnets, my super glue, the kicker for the super glue, and the piece. So I just keep this flush against the table, and I have the two new holes. I've got one of the magnets over here, I've got the other one right here. What we do is just come in here, go around the edge with some super glue. I'm just getting it all around all the edges. And then we're going to go ahead and spray some kicker and drop our magnet in there. Now once that magnet's in there, I'm just going to kind of hold it down until the kicker hits until the kicker kicks in. Double check the bottom so you can see it is nice and flush. Uh, a little bit of glue stuck on the bottom coming out, but that's no big deal. We're going to sand it down anyway. So we'll go ahead and throw the other one in. Pretty good. Kicker in there. Try to 
briefly pop this in before it goes. There it is. It's a little tricky at first, trying to get it to work against the metal. Got five magnets on the fence, flush fit to the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead back on my sandpaper and clean off any of this glue once it's completely dry. And then we'll go ahead and take our piece of the uh, finishing film, the 30 micron finishing film. And we're putting the actual gritty side against the bottom. We're putting that face up and then we're putting this onto it. Take some spray glue. Now with spray glue, if you really want it to stick long and last, you're gonna to wanna to spray both sides of the object. So I sprayed that and I'm gonna let it get tacky and then I'm gonna spray this. And then let those dry a little bit. That's just gonna help set up. So now each piece has an adhesive on it. So when you put those two pieces together, that's the actual contact adhesive that you want the contact that's the deal so we're going to take this now and we're going to stick it on top i'm going to try to line up the edge just so i have less trimming i'm going to try to line up one straight edge that i have over on this side and i'm just going to go ahead and take my cutting off all the excess and there you have it so now you've got this nice grippy bottom and five magnets, which we've done two of today. And you see it wasn't very uh, difficult to get those in there. So let's go over to the bandsaw and see how this works. And we'll give you a little demo. As you can see, it does have uh, a good bit of resistance before it starts to move. So it's plenty for doing smaller things. So if I wanna cut if I want to cut the width of this material out of this block, what I would do is just put this material in between the fence and the blade. I'll put the square on the edge, get the front right, bring it down, check it here, tighten that up, and then I'll bring it to the back, and then make sure the, the back is straight too. Then I come back to the front, once again, straight, straight, we're good to go. Use our fence, and then cut right through. And as you can see, just straight cut. Same width as the piece. So there you have it. And if I want to make more adjustments, I usually will put my hands on the edge of the fence and use my thumbs to kind of push it away. But again, it stays pretty good. So for another example, let's say I want to make a square out of this, out of the end here. What I would do is slide my fence out of the way, bring my piece of wood back in, bring the fence in, so we get a nice slide. <clears throat> we'll check the fence from the side, bring it back, check the top, slide that in, looks pretty good. Take that out, start the bandsaw. And there you have it. So that's kind of my workflow. Um, sometimes it's very easy to just, if you want to take something off the edge and take even just eyeball, say eyeball a quarter of an inch, <clears throat> you can still come in with the same theory. Slide this, bring it back in. Looks pretty good. And then we can take our edge that's bad. Say we wanted to cut this off. And there you have a nice clean edge without a whole bunch of setup. Once you get used to the workflow, I think it's a great tool. It costs me nothing to make except for a couple dollars for the magnets. And uh, I use it all the time. Made out of angle iron, magnets, and some 30 micron sanding film. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please. 
If you're new to the channel and you like this stuff, go ahead and hit subscribe. Click the thumbs up if you like stuff. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your views. Tune in next time.